I know, I know. You all expected this to be the Joshua Jones VHS review. Well, unfortunately, it's no longer possible. I did try to find a Joshua Jones VHS on the internet, but neither Amazon nor eBay were selling one. There were no listings on either, Ana on either Amazon or eBay, so I couldn't get my hands on one. I'm so sorry to everyone who, um, who's disappointed about this. And I'm so sorry about this last minute change, but I had no other choice, I'm afraid. I was going to do this VHS review at some point anyway, but now I could no longer, but now I can no longer do my Joshua Jones VHS review. I just thought, screw it. I'll, I'll review this VHS for episode 37 instead. So, what are, we what are we reviewing instead? This Steam Railways of East Anglia documentary I got when I was at the, um, when I was at the East Anglian Railway Museum with my grandparents earlier this month. So this VHS was produced by Graham Whistler Productions. I've got a, I've got of their, I've got a couple of their Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway DVDs. Of the Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway DVDs that they made. But I haven't been able to get my hands on one of their VHSs until now. So, as the name suggests, this is about, this is all about the many steam railways of East Anglia. This documents all the, um, steam railways and steam museums of East Anglia. Well, almost all of them. The East Anglian Rowing Museum itself isn't featured in this for some reason, even though I feel it should have been. This, but this is a very nice VHS, though, and watching through this VHS earlier today prompt has, has kind of inspired me to, um, possibly go to all of these places. Li very likely with my grandparents for most of them when I next visit them. When these places are open, that is, anyway. Anyway, so here's the front cover. We've got all sorts of steam engines there. We've got the N7 class, um, two Buer Valley Railway locomotives, a Stania Black 5. There's an Austerity down there, another Black 5 there, even though it's green, or a Standard class, and lots of other engines. There's a Garrett, a Swedish locomotive, and a Hunslet. So, yeah, here's the spine, here's the back. Released in 1997, has a running time of approximately 60 minutes. Alright guys, sit back, relax, go get yourself some snacks and a drink if you want. This review is going to be about 65 to 70 minutes long. Here's the tape. Here's the back of the tape. Close this. Now I'll go ahead and put the tape into my VHS player. Camera onto the tripods, and we shall begin. Also guys, if you hear some typing in the background during this review, it's because I'm working on um, the script for one of my next big videos. It's a video where I'm talking about whether I'm going to talk about all of my pre-2019 videos. I've only just put the tape in and it's already started. Very interesting. So now we've got an austerity on the North Norfolk Railway. Volume is nice and loud. Love this music. They use this music. Graham Whistler Productions use this music in the intro and outro of all of their um, of all of their productions.
East Anglia are as diverse as the countryside itself. From the surprising undulations of the standard gauge railway of the North Norfolk Line, to the great little trains of the Bure Valley and Wells and Walsingham Railway, and the sheer variety of Brassingham Steam Museum, each of the six railways offers the visitor a unique experience of beautiful scenery and steam oh, power. Course. I can believe that. engines pretty unique especially that one there kind of looks like a um an 060 version of duncan that red engine you just saw nice stuff Only opens, show you how long shows how long ago this made. The Anglia railway line to Cromer and Sheringham links with the Bure Valley love, and Roxham station. I love this railway. I went, site is an HST I went on this railway in 2016. I went on this railway in 2016. Running double headed. Love, loved it. It's not as good as the Romney Home Dimchurch railway, but I really love this railway. Zebby cross engines. The red one, Blickling Hall, now has smoke deflectors. Its smoke deflectors were fitted sometime between when this was made and 2006. So yeah, now has, so Blickling Hall now has smoke deflectors. And, and since it since 2017, I believe, it's painted blue instead of red. Number six, Blickling Hall, is named for a National Trust house near Aylsham and yeah, painted right. in Midland Crimson Lake. Number seven, in the livery of the Great Western, is almost identical. Both locomotives... Number seven, seven um, doesn't have a... Um, of obviously didn't have a name back then, but number seven is actually Spitfire. named Spitfire. Six-inch gauge locomotives. Yeah, number seven's named Spitfire. Now, so me how these it is. Yeah, Valley Railway. At either end of the railway are turntables, allowing the locomotives to come around their trains and run forward. Yeah. I remember being pulled by Spitfire on the return journey from Aylsham to Wroxham. Yeah, we, we picked up the train at... Yeah, we picked up... I, I picked up the train at Aylsham. I was staying in Norfolk and I picked up the train from Wroxham. From the, from, from the main line station of Roxham. So I believe Roxham Broad, loco number one, Roxham. Oh, there's River S from the Raven Glass and Estelle Railway. So I believe, um, so Roxham Broad, um, so remember being pulled by loco number one, Roxham Broad on the outward journey, and loco number seven, Spitfire on the return journey. Special events throughout the year. The recent transport gala, three visiting locomotives from the Ravenglass and Estelle Railway were on display, as well as the railway's own locomotives. 
The visitors were the tram engine, flower of the forest, the river Esk, and a rare steam excursion for the tiny Sinolda, which normally resides in the museum of Radio Plus. Toots. There we are. That's the engine I was also pulled by. It actually started out life as a diesel engine in 1964. It was originally designed with a steam outline to disguise its diesel workings. It was only converted to full steam operation by Winston Engineering when it was acquired by the Bure Valley in 1992. Now that is interesting. Glickling Hall has a much deeper whistle now. It lies on the bed of the old East Norfolk Railway, which had been closed in 1952. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the formation of the track was kept in a reasonable condition by BR as an access route until 1982. The original track and ballast were only removed in 1984. as an extension of the long distance footpath in Norfolk, as well as in partnership with the BVR for conversion into a narrow gauge railway. Many visitors ramble the Bure Valley Walk along the nine mile length of the railway and return by The railway now also has two more engines. One, number eight, which I can't remember the name of, and another built in 2000. So one of them was built the year this, this was released. I can't remember its name, number eight. Number nine was, um, number nine was built, Mark Timothy was built in 2003. For some reason though, and then diesels are numbers three, four, and five. For some reason though, there's no number two. Which, which give the, 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 the Bureau Valley Railway has no number two engine. For some and which leads me to believe to that they, that they tried to build their own number two engine, but it failed miserably and they scrapped it. The Bure Valley's terminus is at Roxham, the capital of the Broads. Roxham. Oh, the capital of the Broads. Interesting bit of information.
Newcastle, Headingham, Essex, is the Colne Valley Railway. Mm, Colne Valley, interesting. My grandparents live quite close to the Colne Valley Railway. But regardless, but for some reason we've never been there. I think it's because I just haven't fancied it. It's, and it's just a, it's, it's really not much of a ride at all, this, this railway. Uh, however, I think next time I go see my grandparents, I've actually forgotten that the Colm Valley Railway existed at one point. Until just after I got this VHS, actually. Yeah, I'm probably going to ask my ask to go to the Colm Valley Railway next time I see my grandparents when the railway's open. On a visit from the Mid Ants Railway, we can clearly see that standard five locomotive number seven three zero nine six. We can clearly see that this um Thomas event. Yeah, you see, we can clearly see that that engine is cosplaying as Henry. You can tell by his it's it's number three it's green paint and number three on its side and four six zero wheel arrangement and it looks very close and it actually does look very close to Henry's real life counterpart, the Black Five. I think that yeah, that's about as close as um I, that's pretty close to what Henry would look like in real life, I feel. That's, yeah, that is pretty close to what I feel Henry would look like in real life. If Henry was alive, and actually sentient, that is. Still find that name funny. 
we have the Bressingham Steam Museum. Pretty famous place this is. No, um, despite so many steam railway enthusiasts going to the Bressingham Steam Museum, I've never actually been. But after seeing, but after seeing this, um, after watching this VHS through, I definitely will go to the Bressingham Steam Museum at some point. garden and is a very successful working nursery specializing in hardy plants. In fact, it was visitors to the gardens that inspired Mr. Bloom to begin collecting and restoring traction engines, and word spread that the engines were well worth seeing. This led to his desire to collect railway locomotives. The first railway was the garden, a nine and a half inch gauge 750 foot circuit with two loops, which became fully operational in 1965. In the 33 years to follow, the Museum of Live Steam grew in leaps and bounds. The nursery line is a 1 foot 11 inch line which has been extended to 2 and a quarter miles over the years. It was originally intended to serve two needs. It allowed visitors to view the nursery beds without causing damage as well as being a convenient means of access for the business itself in the winter, when lifting plants and replanting was difficult. Sets out for a day's work on the Bressingham Waveney line. 
The other drivers prepared to steam the Hunslets on the nursery line. Resting them kind of sounds like resting them. <laughs> I've found, I find that so hilarious. <laughs> resting them. <laughs> We should call the Breathium Steam Museum the Boobingham Steam Museum in that case. Boobingham. There's also a third member of the class called Black Prince, which is on the Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway. Yeah, as is Black Prince.
one. Yeah. To the ten and a quarter inch garden line, the Brest and Railways offer a unique experience. Yeah, they offer so much. I'm definitely going to visit the um, the Bressingham, the Bressingham, sorry, Bressingham Steam Museum at some point now. I always think that the Neen Valley Railway was, is pronounced Nain Valley Railway, but then the E would be replaced with an A. Nain Valley Railway. Yes, they, yes, the, they, they, the, the Neen Valley does have a very wide range of, diverse range of rolling stock. Very diverse range indeed. videos, and even the odd blockbuster or two. Disguised as a German railway's DB locomotive, Neen Valley's Swedish-built Y1A successfully demolished a Mercedes saloon car in the James Bond film Octopussy. Now that is something I didn't know. I've seen most of the James Bond films, but I haven't seen Octopussy yet. That is something I didn't actually know until I watched this um, VHS. In working day, it arrived sedately at Orton Mere of the railway's four Mere. stations to take passengers Mere. on to Peterborough. Peterborough. typing now while I work on the script for my for my pre-2019 videos video. I know jack about Swedish railways. I don't know a thing, I don't know the first thing about Swedish railways, to be honest. I know that's um, strange thing for me, but I mostly know about British, British and American railways. I don't really know that much about... It remained there until early and Australian railways as well. I don't really know that much about... I really know it's too much about international railways. Engineers, and its excellent condition prompted its purchase by a number of the NDR's members. Oh, I know a lot about the Japanese railways as well. And Indian railways. Other than that, though, no, I don't know too much. I get, well, I guess I know about modern European railways, but I don't know the first thing about Scandinavian railways. If I'm being honest.
wants and partially need that prompted the NVR to acquire a variety of continental locomotives. In the early 70s, it was difficult to find BR steam locomotives in stock that did not require a great deal of restoration. It was realized by the Peterborough Railway Society, who were in the process of restoring the line, that there were a number of foreign locomotives kept in strategic reserve, which were in excellent condition and no, virtually by, the, by the various militaries of the world. Railway, the Black 5, number M5337, runs round its train at Peterborough Station. Oh, I think that was an editing mistake that you just saw. Yeah, I think that may have been an editing mistake there. Those weird transitions. Soon after the crew connects the train's brake hoses, the 5337 is ready for its short journey to Orton Mere Station. After opening the regulator, the driver starts out of the station with the regulator full forward, then backs off for more economic running. Yep, that's... Yep, I know that that's how you drive steam that's trains, I knew that. One of the most successful and popular locomotives ever constructed. Designed by Sir William Stania, these mixed traffic engines... You mispronounced it, sir. It's Stania, not Stania. It's pronounced William Stania. Get it right, you dingus. <laughs> There's also the Fairy Meadows Railway. Many passengers break their journey here to explore its lakes and leisure facilities.
Stoke South for the 1 in 270 gradient to Mill Bridge, steepest on the line. You want to see a really steep gradient though, wait until later in the VHS. Dimchurch Railway before, but obviously held by this railway. Now, I think the railway still holds that title now, the Wells and Walsingham Railway. Again, the Wells and Walsingham and the North Norfolk Railways, for that matter, are both railways that I really should have gone on. Really, I should have done them at the same time I did the Bure Valley Railway, but um, I didn't. But didn't for some reason, but uh, but, I, but again, after watching this, I'm definitely going to do the North Norfolk Railway and the Wells and Walsingham Railway, but I'll most likely do them on the same day at the same time. is due to the dream of one man, Lieutenant Commander Roy Francis, who mm, thought of it, Commander. mortgaged his house to finance it, launched it, and still personally operates it. Nice. That is some commitment. Respect to that man. Respect to that man. And, um, mortgage... And, um... Brittle Croft also mortgaged her house in the same way that Brittle Croft did, did, mortgaging her house to finance, um, mortgaging her house to finance, um, to finance the first season of Fast and Tank Engine. I may consider mortgaging my house to, um, I may consider mortgaging my house to finance the first season of, of Raptor Dogs. 
my series, which I've told you guys about so many times. Wells next the sea station to Walsingham was laid on the bed of the former Standard Gauge Wells and Fakenham Railway, which closed in 1964. After 15 years of neglect, as well as part of it being filled as a rubbish dump by the local council, the daunting... And just like the one of the cuttings on the Boo Bell Rally before it reopened to East Greysteads. The railway started services in 1982, with Pilgrim, an 060 side tank engine built specifically for the railway, which was designed to haul four coaches up the daunting gradient of the line. However, the railway proved such a success, it was quickly realized that a far more powerful locomotive would have to be built to double the line's passenger capacity. In 1985, consultant engineer Neil Simpkins was asked to help solve the problem. This resulted in a proposal for a new 260 plus 062 Garrett with four 6.4-inch yes. cylinders and a large superheated boiler working at 140 pounds per square Very minute. powerful engines, the Garrett. completion, the Norfolk Hero became the first of the ingeniously designed Garrett engines to be placed on a public British railway since 1939. Yeah, Welsh Highland Railway. Yeah, like... The massive ones they have on the Welsh Highland Railway, the massive garrets they have on the Welsh Highland Railway. They just look so badass. Fearing the cutting outside of Walsingham. To the rescue came Ken Barnard, who provided lorries and diggers to shift thousands of tons of rubbish for the railway and didn't ask for a penny. Oh, now that is some Originally a 1 in 40 gradient, Barnard's cutting is now 1 in 29, one of the steepest railway gradients in the country. My God, that is steeper than a, that is actually steeper than the, than even the Licky Incline, which is um, which is the steepest mainline gradient in the in the standard gauge mainline gradient in the UK. And if if even steam trains had trouble getting up that, the one in thirty eight Licky Incline. At its terminus in that must be an, a very powerful engine if it can go up a 1 in 29 gradient with ease. While the driver wipes down Norfolk Hero before it makes its return run on this remarkable little railway. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think on the... Um, on the Ipsto section of the Charnock Valley Railway in Staffordshire, one of the gradients is 1 in 25. I could be wrong, but I had it in my head that it was 1 in 25. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, guys. But I know that the Ipstone, um, that there is a, a pretty steep section of the Ipstone, of the Ipstone branch on the, on the Chernet Valley Railway. Okay, the final part, the North Norfolk Railway. Yeah, there's the wash. With six locomotives in steam. Right, we're very near, we're near the end of this very chest now. from the heyday of the London and North Eastern Railways. The 060 Class J27 pulls away from Weybourne Station with a demonstration goods train. The powerful little austerity tank locomotives pulled double-headed and singly. The Gresley designed N2 works up the gradient. Oh yeah, the, Gre the Gresley designed N7. The East Anglian Railway Museum owns that, and it's been under overhaul since 2015.
diesel helped cope with the numbers. So yes, guys, that is a fast. You just heard it. We had class 37s. Quite like the class 37s and a few other diesels. Especially yeah, like the Delta so. industrial locomotive and the N7 worked double-headed. out of Sheringham Station, it has a surprisingly steep gradient as it curves away from the sea and inland to halt. When the railway was originally opened in 1887, it was unusual in that it was built to exploit the rapidly growing tourist market at the time rather than serve the community. Initially, the line was meant to serve the harbour of Blakeney, but with the interest in Clement Scott's poppy land, the line was diverted along the coast to Cromer. Wayburn Station was built in grand Victorian style to encourage the tourist trade. have proved invaluable to many preserved railways. They were made in abundance during the war and after to work in industry, and their reliability as well as availability have helped many fledgling preservation railways over the years. I know, but again, I know they're very, they're very useful and helpful engines, but again, they're just way too common for my liking. 
I honestly prefer the um, prefer the less prefer the less. Um, the sturdy austerity ring hall was restored by the North Norfolk in 1978. It has been in active service ever since. I, I've actually been pulled by that engine before when it was when it was on loan when it was on loan to the Spa Valley Railway for a couple of years. I remember being pulled by that engine when it was on loan to the Spa Valley Railway for a couple of years. It's painted black nowadays, ring hall. There's the class 37 again. Sheringham Station, the 060J27 and the 062 Tank N7 are preparing to run double headed to Holt. Oh, oh. Why does Norfolk has why does Norfolk why does Suffolk and Norfolk have such strange town and village names? Dis, Holt, Wells Next the Sea. So damn strange names. those names and why do they think they would be who thinks who on earth thinks that those names aren't strange It goes it alone. special event weekend, or if you're just wanting to experience beautiful scenery combined with standard gauge steam, the North Norfolk Railway provides a perfect day. countryside. trains. Sorry I'm uh, sorry if I'm s sounding a bit um, sounding a little off. I'm recording this quite late at night and I'm very tired. So if I've sounded off throughout this whole review, that's why I'm very very tired.
coot. That's a nice shot. Very nice shot. Very love the M7 locos. Seven, technically, if you count the, um, if you count the, um, East Anglian Rhine Museum, they sometimes run steam trains. Enthusiastic volunteers who have allowed the rest of us to enjoy steam into the next millennium. Yes. Very nice documentary, and I completely agree with what he said. Massive respect to volunteer, not just the volunteers of all these railways, but every, but, but to the volunteers of every single volunteer of every single railway around the world. In fact, massive respect to anyone, anyone who's ever volunteered on a on a steam railway around the world, even if it was only for a weekend. Yeah, massive respect to all of them. Old Graham Whistler himself. Fitting name, Whistler, steam engine whistle. If you'd like to have details of our twin fitting name videos and our free video club, please contact Graham Whistler Productions, 21 Hewitt's Lane, Rose Green, Ogden Regis, West Sussex, PO21 3DR. Yeah, that's the headquarters. Great. Very nice documentary. Again, I apologise if I sounded off throughout that whole review. As I said, I'm quite tired tonight. Right, while this is rewinding, I'm going to quickly go to the toilet, and then I'll let you all hear the nostalgic sound. Be back in a sec. Okay, yeah, uh, where's my remotes? Okay, I'll, I'll, I don't need it now, it's, uh, but I will need it in a minute. Okay, it's rewinding now. Yeah, I quite enjoyed this. Can't really hear, hear the sound of it rewinding though. Come on. Here we go. And my OCD requires that I rewind it slightly more. Okay. Back in. Okay, you can come out now. Okay, I 
open this up, tape back in, and close. That concludes this VHS review. Yeah, very interesting documentary. Really enjoyed it. And if you're a if you're a train enthusiast, then yes, definitely add this VHS to your doc to your collection. Yeah, if you're a train enthusiast or or are just interested in this sort of thing casually, then I'd say add this to your collection. Either way. Yeah, I really enjoyed this VHS review, slightly more than I thought I would, even though I, I didn't have as much to say in this review as I thought I would, but that's mainly because of how tired I was tonight. But either way, guys, hope you're not too disappointed about me no longer being able to do the Joshua Jones VHS review, but I still hope you all enjoyed this VHS review regardless. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to me, TrainLover16, if you haven't already. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye, everyone!